you're watching this, then your friends and co-workers have been murdered and replaced with evil, malevolent robot clones. These bloodthirsty robot monsters will be your new co-workers, bosses, and ultimately murderers. This usually brings up some questions, which we'll seek to answer here today. How do I address my grief about my co-worker's death without upsetting his Robocon? I know this is something I'm just going to have to get through, but I just don't see how I can be expected to work alongside the horrific Robo-monster that killed my friend! Your friend died because his emotions made him weak. I hate you! I hate you! <laughs> A word of warning, any sign of anger in front of a robo-clone will cause an automatic default switch, which will cause instantaneous human death, sometimes on a national, even global scale. And besides, it's not the robo-clone's fault. Your friend did die because his emotions made him weak. Let's not kill the messenger here, people. How do I keep a robo-clone from killing me? Rest assured, you will be killed. But the best way to avoid being murdered prematurely is to never engage in insincere small talk. Robo-clones love making small talk on a variety of topics that genuinely interest them. But they fly into a murderous rage when they realize you're just talking for the sake of talking. Watch this example. So do you guys plug into an outlet at the end of the night, or do you have battery packs, or... Mm -hmm. Now let's see that interaction handled the correct way. I say, old chum, the old missus and I were wondering if you plug into an outlet or if you have a battery pack for all your robocalls. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful question. This will be the beginning of a lifelong friendship. You spot the difference? That's right. The second employee affected a fake-sounding British accent while making small talk. As everybody knows, robots are huge anglophiles and will respond to almost anything spoken with an English accent. Here, watch this. I say, Governor, it's our time we had you melted down for scrap metal. Don't you think, love? You truly are an English rose. Is the robo clone from the last scene hitting on the guy with a fake British accent? Probably. Robo clones are completely asexual and reproduce in an amoeba like fashion. However, in the presence of someone they think is British, they succumb to their most illicit and carnal desires. Should I fornicate with or marry a Robocom? <laughs> Let's put it this way. I'm sure your Robo Masters wouldn't mind, especially if you convert to the Robo religion of Reformed Judaism and worship Al Malthazor, the Robo God of human killing and winter sports. Is marrying a Robocom even legal? Your human laws mean nothing to robo-clones. Man-animals and robo-clones intermarry every day. Why, well, here's some footage of a marriage I just attended the other day. Well, that's hot. Probably makes you want to have sex. Sex with an evil robot murderer. Which brings me to our next question. How can I seduce one of these bloodthirsty robo-killers? Why not be upfront with your desires? Everyone appreciates a little honesty. Even an evil robot murderer. Hey, you with the melons. Hey, you will have sex with me. And you will enjoy it. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> Why have all my coworkers been killed and replaced by horrific robo-clones, but not me? <laughs> Chances are, if you're watching this, you have a very robotic personality, or at least the psychological or astrological profile that indicates you work well with robots, or metallic beings of robotic persuasion, or even robots. Furthermore, our files suggest that you are spineless, weak-willed, and easily led and would gladly welcome the ultimate domination of a race of all-powerful robo-gods with open arms. So, have fun. Enjoy each day. Live it to its fullest because it very well may be your last.